Former Secretary of Defense Bill Cohen. Uh, Mr. Secretary, great to see you as always. Uh, let's start with your reaction. I was just asking Matthew Chance, uh, is it all that much of a surprise that Russia was able to confirm that Yevgeny Prigozhin did in fact uh, die in that plane uh, that went down? Uh, your thoughts? Jim, could I just say something first about how sorry I am for the loss of life on the Osprey and the people who are still injured? Oh, absolutely. And, and some of them quite seriously. Um, my heart goes out to their families, as it does to the families who are about to have a vigil for an, a neo Nazi white supremacist killing young black people. Uh, the, the juxtaposition of men who are training uh, to go and protect freedom for people the world over and have somebody domestically uh, uh, kill uh, people who are trying to enjoy freedom. Now, to get to the, uh, the issue of, um, of Prigozhin, uh, I, I think he, uh, he was either a, a, I'd say, a fool. Uh, or a, a fatalist, but he had to know that he was in deep trouble. He called Putin a liar. Putin called him a traitor. He may be the only person on the planet who didn't see Godfather II, uh, where uh, Michael Corleone is taking out uh, Fredo with a, with a big kiss. And I suspect that's what happened when he went to the Kremlin, that uh, Putin embraced him and may have given that fatal kiss, and, and, and Prigozhin thought all things were, uh, were made up at that point. I kind of doubt it. I think he uh, knew that he was um, keeping on the move as much as he could because he was a marked man and, uh, and was going to meet this kind of an end. Yeah, I mean, I think that's going to go down as one of life's great mysteries, uh, Mr. Secretary, that, you know, why Prigozhin thought if he were to just stop that march to Moscow that all would be forgiven uh, by Putin. Uh, it just it, it boggles the mind why he thought he, his days were not numbered at that point. Um, well, there, there's the other issue in terms of the Kremlin or Putin's office now saying that I know nothing. I did nothing. I had nothing to do with this uh, plane going down. Uh, and uh, it's, it's almost uh, what uh, Michael Cohen was saying about his former boss. Doesn't have to say anything, just indicate what he wants done. And it's something out of uh, Thomas Beckett, the Archbishop uh, who was uh, murdered, assassinated. Uh, when uh, uh, he asked, uh, when, when the, the Henry II asked, who will rid me of this meddlesome priest? In this case, this meddlesome mercenary. All he has to do, ask it. And there will people who will carry it out and he can step back and say, I only asked a question. I didn't tell them to do anything. I had nothing to do with this. So I think it's, it's pretty clear when you look at the probabilities given Putin's history of taking out enemies. And this was an enemy, as far as he was concerned, who backstabbed him and was a traitor. So I think the footprints of guilt will be uh, traced back to the Kremlin, no matter what they say. And I think people will understand, even though um, Putin is uh, enjoying saying, uh, I had nothing to do, this is all part of some other plan, not mine. People in uh, Russia understand this is what he does. And there's been a lot of speculation on what brought down the plane. U.S. intelligence uh, says there's a number of possibilities that are being uh, evaluated, including an on-air explosion. You're, based on your experience uh, being over at the Pentagon, do you think that uh, they'll eventually have a sense as to what took place, despite what the Kremlin is saying? I don't think we'll ever know because I don't think the Kremlin will ever give us the evidence that is uh, this real. Uh, remember, they were responsible for the Malaysian air, uh, uh, commercial airline being taken down. They never allowed international inspectors to see what was the cause uh, of that crash. Here, they're not allowing anybody to see what's uh, going on or analyzing what could have taken. It could have been a, a crimped fuel line. It could have been foul um, um, fuel going through the, the, the lines. It could have been a drone fired by a Russian or a Ukrainian. Uh, it could have been a malfunction. It could have been a bunch of birds flying into the jet engines. All of that is possible, but what's more probable and more likely is how many people have been chucked out of windows uh, in Russia? How many people have died with a bullet in their head going across the bridge in, in Moscow? How many people have been put in prison for 10 years for saying, this is a war going on in Ukraine. So when you start looking at probabilities as opposed to possibilities, the probability is very clear to me. The footprints are traced by the searchlight of probability right back uh, to the Kremlin. And, and Secretary, yesterday I spoke with uh, retired U.S. Army uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, and he was saying that it's possible that Prigozhin's death could some, somehow take some pressure off of Putin. 
uh, and that potentially could lead the, the Russians in the direction of maybe wanting to negotiate peace. I guess making the case that because Putin doesn't have as much pressure coming from his right flank, um, that sort of thing, that maybe Putin uh, might be more in a mood to, to negotiate or might be in a better position to negotiate from a domestic political standpoint. What do you think? Or is, or is Putin really just in a position now where he can drive a hard bargain with the Ukrainians and he's just going to continue to prosecute this war the way we've seen it prosecuted so far in a brutal, brutal fashion? You know, the question's been raised, does, uh, is Putin strengthened by eliminating Prigozhin or is he weakened? Well, he is strengthened uh, to some extent, but he starts from a lower base. He was weakened by the sight of Russian soldiers being wiped out by the Ukrainians. He was weakened by the sight of his generals being killed on the front line. He was weakened by seeing the Ukrainians take the fight to, to his people. And then Boghossian comes in and, uh, and participates, and you have Bakhmut. And so Boghossian becomes a hero, making Putin look even weaker. So the fact that Boghossian's gone now, he gets strengthened but only to the level he was before Prigozhin came. So it's a temporary strengthening. And secondly, when you think about Putin, it's sort of looking like bodybuilders who get pumped up by steroids and they look very strong, but they have a fatal heart defect. So what the appearance was for Russia, they were big and they were 10 feet tall. When we saw them in action, they really were very small. They were six feet or less. And so I think that Putin may be strengthened, but only to the extent that he was, he was even strong before. He actually was very weak before. He's back to being as weak as he was the time he went into uh, Ukraine. So I don't yeah. know if that gives him more opportunity to seek for uh, a solution, but I suspect the only way he'll come to the negotiating table if more Russian soldiers keep coming home in body bags. That will put him to the, uh, the bargaining table. I don't think anything else will. All right, Secretary uh, Bill Cohen, thanks so much. As always, uh, greatly appreciate the insights. Good to see you again. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jim. And